Oh, more Draniacs. 12 times 15 second max. Two minute rest. Ooh. Whoa. So when people start taking up cycling, if they start wanting to get faster and actually do something structured with it, there becomes this huge amount of confusion. Should you ride long? Should you ride steady? Some might see me doing low RPM strength intervals. You might see me doing 15 second bursts like this or even four minute intervals. So developing cyclists start questioning, well, like, what should I do? I don't have time to do all of these workouts every single week. Well, I'm gonna give you two workouts that you can focus on as a beginner cyclist that are going to allow you to ride longer, ride faster with just two bike workouts per week and hardly any suffering involved. It'll work for real. Okay, so let's say you are a new cyclist that's just got into the sport and as opposed to just going and riding around aimlessly, you wanna actually start getting faster. Typically, what most people start thinking about is they wanna do two things. They wanna ride faster and they wanna be able to ride faster for longer. So you wanna be faster with endurance. When I first got into cycling, I ended up thinking that you just go out and you ride. And sometimes you ride fast, and sometimes you ride slow, and sometimes you ride long, and sometimes you just try to push it here or there. But what ended up happening with me, because I didn't really have any sort of plan or any sort of structure or any sort of guided workout, I rode for the first three years that I got into endurance sports without really making any progress. When I went into triathlons, I was really no faster than average. When I went and joined group rides, I was getting spit off the back. And there were people that were way older, clearly less fit, that were able to drop me because they had had more years of doing these structured workouts that actually are designed to make them stronger, faster, and be able to do that for a longer period of time. So what I'm gonna give you is just two workouts. And in our book, Triathlon Bike Foundations, which can apply to triathlon or cycling in general, we talk about the two workouts per week that athletes need to do in order to be able to go faster and longer. We did a podcast with Dr. Martin Gabala who wrote the one minute workout where he talked about all of the research that's being done about super short, intense interval training. And what's being found in study after study is that this common misconception of you have to grind, you have to be putting in huge hours to constantly be suffering so that you can actually get faster. It's really just not the case. If you want to A, just be healthier, it takes a lot less work than people originally thought. And what they're actually finding is that even in already trained cyclists, that a really well-designed but short and intense workout can be enough to make a huge amount of progress. So what do these workouts look like that are short and intense? Well, they look like a really short but actually very easily intense kind of workout. They might be about 30 to 40 minutes and on average what they include is roughly three to four total minutes, that's it, of really intense work that's broken up. So I'll give you an example. The workout that I just did was 12 times 15 seconds at maximum effort with two minutes rest in between. And it doesn't have to be that. You can make up your own different version of it. But here are the guidelines. You want somewhere in between about two and a half and four minutes of really intense workout. And the rest should be anywhere from about a one to three work to rest ratio. So something like 20 seconds on, 60 seconds off, all the way up to a one to nine work to rest ratio, like 30 seconds on, four and a half minutes off. So you can start playing with that, play with these really, really intense intervals. Here's the key to it. You want to be broken up with efforts ranging from about 10 seconds to about 40 seconds. This is your neuromuscular power. This is your top end power. And as you're developing as an athlete, that top end power is really critical because it's gonna make you faster. It's gonna make steady efforts less painful. It's also gonna burn a huge amount of fat. It's going to increase your VO2 max. So the amount of oxygen that you can process every single minute ends up raising. And it's a really 
good bang for your buck as far as time spent versus the benefits that you get. When I say intense, they need to be intense. They need to be like tossing your cookies kind of intense. And if you end up fading in the last few, that's okay. What we're really just trying to do is push as hard as we can to create that hormetic response where the body adapts to be able to perform the tasks that you're giving it. So that's workout number one. Workout number two, much more simple, much more easy, as long as you like riding long. That first workout is going to have an endurance benefit because you are gonna be stronger, you're gonna be able to process your energy a lot more efficiently, but to ride long, you really just need to ride long. And how I recommend athletes do this is with a three-step process. The first is to ride comfortably long at a very low intensity. How much is a low intensity? You can go online and find your zone two, your easy effort, heart rate cap, and stay under this. You're staying a long way under this. It's in your zone one or two. And ride under that heart rate cap for a comfortably long distance. This is your endurance cap. This is you burning a lot of fat as fuel, which is going to help you ride longer. The second thing that you need to do is increase that. And you can increase that by around eight to 10% each week, drop down every third or fourth week to about 60%. So let's say you ride 60 minutes, then the next week ride 66 minutes, then the next week ride 73 minutes, then drop down to around 45 minutes, then come back and do 10% more than your previous longest. So up around 85 minutes. And by going up in these eight to 10% roughly increments, you're gonna gradually be able to adapt to riding longer and longer. The third thing that you need to do in order to actually make this really beneficial, really easy, is I believe in a timed carb approach. When you end up having carbohydrates before this ride, you blunt your body's ability to actually burn fat as fuel. Your blood sugar goes high and your body stops accessing fat as fuel as easily. So I recommend before these low intensity rides, don't have carbs, but certainly eat. So this is something like eggs or a protein bar or sausages, maybe a bulletproof coffee, something like this that is going to give you lots of fuel and fuel during the ride, but just restrict carbohydrates until after the ride. What this is going to do is really teach your body to burn a ton of fat as fuel, which is going to allow you to ride for ages. Until I started doing this, I would always get those achy legs no matter how fit I got around the two hour mark because my body was just out of fuel. With those two rides, you are going to be faster, stronger. You're probably going to lose body fat because they're designed to burn a ton of fat during and after the workout. You're gonna be able to ride longer. You're gonna be able to join all kinds of groups and do all kinds of races that you never expected that you could possibly do. You're gonna feel strong and you're gonna feel healthy and enjoy cycling a heck of a lot. This is when it starts getting really fun where there's no workout or no group that you fear and that's when you can start building a community around race plans and race goals or even just adventure goals and it becomes really fun. There is links in the description below to studies that we've got, to the Triathlon Bike Foundation's book that we've got if you want some structure or if you want a full training plan, we have not just triathlon training but bike training at our app that you can get a free 14 day trial of at app.mymotive.com. Later Trainiacs, Ride strong, fast, and far.